All right, welcome to the Soulfully Aligned Business Expansion Experience. Woo -woo. I call it experience because it's a combo of teaching, clearing, workshopping. Um, I don't know all the things. <laughs> it's not just me doing a webinar at you. It's a combo of us working together and uh, creating some cool things. So welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about energy alignment and emotions. And so here's how you get to be with this information. So I will deliver something, I'll, I'll give you an idea, and then we discuss it. So there is no wait till the end when there's a QA. and a you know, sometimes I might say, put it in the chat. Very often I'll say, ask me a question. I want, if you are on these calls, if you come and show up, you get the, the, bl the bliss, the blessing and the gift of getting the attention, getting your questions answered. Um, also, please know that you are being recorded. And so you obviously give permission to have your voice taken out to the people that will be watching this as well. And it's going to be good. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? That would be a yeah, dreams. <laughs> okay. I'm an extrovert. Sometimes I'll need a little, a little like something, something. Okay. The first thing, energy is everything. We're going to talk energy, emotions, and alignment. That is the most important thing. So, in, you know, I, was a psychotherapist for lots of decades and you never take that out of you. Like it still lives in me, all that understanding. Then I moved into the hardcore world of business coaching. Cause when I started business coaching, oh, we couldn't say intuition. We did not say goddess, the divine feminine. We did not talk about the word energy. It was, I was a marketing strategist, hardcore 3D world. These are the marketing rules. So I know all that. I came from that background. And then along the way, I'm like, but how do I know that? They did not teach me that in therapy school. Ha! Huh. And then I developed the deep understanding of my intuitive gifts. And so I blend all of those. And so what so my unique slice in this coaching space is having the background of understanding the psychology and where you break down and the emotions and understanding the strategy and the structure and what you need to do. And then being able to go in with my ninja-like intuition and go, boop, that's where the block is. What I want to let you know is it's probably 95% energy and 5% strategy. And I know all those marketing strategists out there are going to go, say, oh my God, take her off the stage. But what happens is you can have the perfect strategy. You can map out the ideal plan. Raise your hand if you've ever had that. Like you, you know, you paid the money. Like this, this is this works. This is this is proven, and yet something inside of you is just like, nope, and it's maddening. Like right, so so either speak like, what is it like when you when you, because you're hard workers, you're all smart women here, and then but you maybe I know for me there's like what I call the pain of untapped potential. Like gosh dang it, I know I'm supposed to do more. I know I know I know what's in me. Dang it, what is in the way? What is that like? Because I want to I want to shift that. So if anybody wants to just to give some voice to that so we can get it out of the space. What's that like when you know what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it or you do do it and it doesn't work? Fucking say? annoying. Fucking <laughs> annoying. Boom, <laughs> just start it. Yes, it's annoying because you're smart. We're smart. And it's like, dang it. So, so what we do often is we think, oh, then I'll do more of that. Well, more of not what's not working isn't, <laughs> it doesn't help, right? So I wanna take your minds and focus away from the, well, what's the latest funnel formula? How many emails should I send? What about social media? I wanna take your mind off of that and go look inside first. And from that, then it out pictures to, okay, from this aligned space, this is what feels right with social media. Are y'all following me here? Okay. I'd like a little more enthusiasm because it's going to be some good shit, girls. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. When you say the intuition alignment, and yes, there is the, the structure piece. I think all of us have had our own experience, some of us in the corporate world, yeah. where it's structure overwhelm and the ingrained conditioning of that. And so when we... You know, you mentioned funnels. Well, this is how you have to do it. And it's like, it, it, it activates something that I can't describe. <laughs> and it's not a warm and fuzzy feeling, I'm assuming. It's probably Hell no. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, let's start with, we'll start here. There's the 3D and then the 5D. 
Okay, and when I say 3D, I mean this, this world, this three-dimensional world. So this is where the quote, marketing rules fall in. And we're all taught the marketing rules. Now, it's good to know some marketing tactics. Good to know what you have. What do you need to put on a website? What do you need to do to get a client to convert? Like, it's good to have that understanding. But let nobody ever tell you, well, that won't sell unless you do X. You can only get a client by doing Y. So here's what you have to decide. And, and I will, I'm just going to use this word. It's kind of a mind fuck. Okay, because those of you who are on the call and in my audience, you also understand, yeah, there's the, there's the rules of land, laws, right? This is how this is how many emails you send, this is what the captions should blah, 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 blah. And hello, there's the 5D and or the quantum, the space where there is no time and we create differently up here. Y'all there with me? <laughs> and this stuff can change in an instant. And this is where energy is the most important. And we're going to talk a lot about that. And Heather is like, nobody's better at this 5D stuff than my friend Heather. So you feel free to chime in if you want. But, but so for me, when somebody will say, well, you have to do it this way. It's like, I hear you. And I have to be in the right energy in the 5D. That's more attractive than the tactical, structural, procedural things. But sometimes the world's collide is it are y'all following me that can be kind of confusing yes got that. the comment like I like I'm very connected in the 5d too yeah. when I'm in that space but then when I have to come back to the 3d space and like make actual stuff work then yeah. I just go right back into like your 3d and all that 5d goes away so like I think it will be amazing to be able to stay in that 3 5d on the inside and still function in the 3d that's where I think I I struggle. I don't know if others can relate, but like how to maintain that 5D, that exactly. like virtual connection while you're doing stuff. So you don't get right. stuck on that tech stuff. Like, right. it's like a lot of people. Right. Are. And we're going to, we're going to do some tools, but that's exactly it. Like we know this, you guys aren't looking at me going, what are you talking about? You lunatic? Y'all know it. Y'all practice this. You do it. You live from here. And when the money doesn't come or the clients go away, you're like, Oh, I need a better strategy. Okay, perhaps. And it's not a black or white. I'm not talking binaries. It's not you have to have one or the other. You always should have the five D. You should be living in that space and dipping down using the three D things when needed. There are a lot of people that make boatloads of money and they don't have all the marketing collateral what? because their energy is so vibrant. They're so in it. It's just attraction and assumption, right? Okay. Anybody want to say anything else about that? Because that's so that's what you have to understand. It's it's weird. And sometimes this is make sure you choose the right mentor, because if you're like, well, just, I got to get my energy right. And they're like, no, make the cold calls, damn it. And you're like, but, but, but like, <laughs> like ever, never, ever, ever, ever work with a mentor that does not have the same beliefs and values you do. That's just a PSA because who has been burned by somebody that tell, told me how wrong you were because you didn't do it their way. Right. We've all had that. Okay, I get a little heated. Oh, that's like my little soapbox. Okay, so first of all, what does misalignment, because alignment is such a massive thing we're going to talk about. You have to be aligned. So I'll give you an example. One of my clients, I was creating a program for her. So alignment and embodiment to me are the same. So alignment is, yes, I'm supposed to do this. This is in alignment with my soul and my gifts and my desires. Embodiment is, and it's living in me. So it can be aligned, but not embodied. And you need both of these. So I was working with one of my clients designing a course for her. And she spent like years, like she's like, has this fertility course and she just can't get it. She just can't land it. <laughs> like she's doing all the work and she's. And I finally said, How? oh, hold on. Think of the course, find the energy of the course. Where is it in relationship to your body? And guess what? It was over her head. And when I said, okay, allow it to come in, like number one, what has to happen for you to be available for this energy, for, for to, to be the steward of this work. And you guys can use this for all your programs. I'm giving you tools here. What has to shift? We're going to talk about identity later. When we got that right, I said, okay, invite the energy to come into you. Boom. Suddenly she could write about it, talk about it and sell it. So if you think about, so 
some of you are like, I'm having clarity issues. So is that my ideal client? Are they living out there, the energetic, or can you pull them in? So you embody being the person that serves that client. Does that make sense? So when you are misaligned or mis myth embodied isn't the right word, but not embodied, lack of embodiment, what is that like? How many have you have tried to just sell something to sell something? Well, they told me it would sell. Or I don't know, I, I guess I'll lower the price because it's, anybody ever done that? <laughs> and I know you all have. So I just want you to think about if you understand what misalignment feels like, then you can go, wait, hold on. That's no, 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 not, not again. So what does then alignment feel like? What does embodying feel like? And I want you each right now to take a moment. So think of something like if I say, I'm just going to say this. Okay, I'm your mentor. I need all of you to make 10 cold calls a day. And you're going to say, oh, and I want you to feel what happens in your body. 10 cold calls. I'm, you're going to pick up the phone. You're going to just call people. You're just because you have a lot to offer. And this is a great strategy. It's worked for millions. So you're going to call 10 people a day. Got to get used to hearing the no's toughen up with this rejection. How's that feel in your body? You can say the words. <laughs> Constricting. Contraction. Contraction. Perfect. And see what happens oftentimes, here's, here's, see our bodies always tell us the truth. And when I say the body, it's actually the mind and the subconscious. Like, but like this is this is the this this rules this thing this head don't even listen, okay? Because the mind could say, yeah, but so and so so and so she's a seven figure coach and she told me to do that and that's what all our people do and they make millions. What's wrong with me? See the mind fuck of that. So instead of listening exquisitely, like oh that's a heck no, oh gosh, <laughs> contraction. Even if in the 3D, it makes perfect sense. And it's been that if your body's literally contracting, do you think you're going to get any results? So number one, I want you to be aware of alignment and misalignment, embodiment and not embody. So you cannot do it. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead. No, I was just, I, I think it's very easy to kind of trust someone. For example, if you told me that yeah. and I trusted you and I, yeah, and respected you and everything. It's very easy to listen to that. Right, right. Yeah. And that's the challenge is, I mean, maybe I'm a cold call guru. I love the help. I'm not, I hate it. I would never do it. But, um, but I'm like, this works for me. This is giving me seven figures. It's the only tool you need. So I could come from love. But if your body's like, you cannot override yourself. So, so just get this really clear. You are a sovereign individual. Your body is sig sending signals. Do not override because that's abuse. And that takes us back to trauma. That takes us back to this whole shit of neglect, not being witnessed. So the number one thing you can do is go, this is my operating system. And I know when I know when I know. And if I'm not in alignment, I'm not doing it. Now, sometimes you're not in alignment because there's some past beliefs. Right. And we can do clearing and you'd be aligned once you clear the whatever. Does that make sense? There's a reason you're not in alignment. So sometimes it's like, okay, if I could let something go, would I be more alignment? Yes. Or is it just a hard no? Okay. So I want you to like, this is the foundation. Any more questions? You got this one? Okay. So there's the law of attraction and there's a law of assumption. I really want to attract 10 more clients. Right. And how will I feel? Da, da, da. This is why I want the, you know, the, the law of assumptions basically states it's already done. It's inevitable. How does it feel? So this is the 5D. This is playing with the frequency and the vibration of that. And so Tina, imagine I, let me find my, where's my fairy wand when I need it? Oh, here it is. Poof. Okay, Tina. Poof. And Heather. Poof. You have total clarity. Boom. So imagine it's downloaded, oh, your perfect next steps market, target. So Tina, just take a moment. It's never, you already did it. It's already, it's a year later, you're living it. Speak to me how that feels. 
speak in the feeling, the vibration, the energy of, oh my God, ever since June 18th, a year ago, when you did that thing to me, you would not believe it. I have so much clarity. Just pull that in. So go ahead and do that. Feels uh, relaxed, like a relief and like this, like a light, lightness and a joy. Beautiful. 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 Heather, do you want to, do you want to speak that? Really it um, feels free flowing, uh, highly creative, flexible, uh, abundant, and there's a piece around as at the very beginning, when you said, give you permission to speak that word had so much energy on it for me of around where I was aligned and had clarity on things, even as a child. And I was not permitted or allowed permission Oof. to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a, what I feel is like a freedom. So yes. permission isn't, doesn't exist in that. Boom. Right. So this is how we create instead of like, I don't have clarity now sometimes. And again, the 3d, sometimes you might want to do research. You might want to, you want to see, you know, would that interest me? Would they, is, is there a market for this? Would they pay this or this? Should I package it? Like, that's not an unreasonable thing to do. That's decent business skill. That's reasonable. Right. But once you do that, and as you do that, you have to be in the space of it's already done. So you don't create from lack. I don't have it. I don't know. Oh God, this is so hard. It's so far away. It's so out there. I'll never figure it out. You create from it already feels it's already done. I already did it. It feels this way. You see, you get in that vibration frequency and then the little stuff will drop in. Then the, then the details can drop it. Does that make sense to you? So you be the frequency of the you that already created it. So if you knew it's inevitable because you have a desire and desire is God expressing through you. The desire is like desire and imagination. That's like, that's the power, right? So if you're like, yep, this is what I'm having. Cool. Thank you in advance for all this clarity. Have a clarity. It feels awesome. And then boom, boom, boom. Little, little blips will drop in. Do y'all have that experience? Does that make sense to you? Okay. My alignment rules. Yes. Not rules. <laughs> brilliant okay so here's what i want you to know some of some of you are energy workers i think all of us in this work in the energy space you know i had no training in that i never took a course in finding your intuition i um i've come to discover that i came in with what i have it took me a lot of years to wrap my hands on it because i'd be like holy shit how did i know who did that who told me wait what it's a curse wait hold on just say like it took me years to go oh and now I just trust it and I know it but it took a lot of years in the beginning because I didn't in my mind I didn't have the 3d credentials right I didn't go to those training schools I didn't did it I just started working it and just going ha ah, what the hell and I want you to save yourself all the years it took me to own it because there's a lot of people I could have helped that I didn't help because I was holding back so I was like do I have enough qualifications? I mean, yeah, I was a therapist. I have degrees and all that, but talking about past life stuff and curses and clearing, what? Who am I? And I want you to know with no training, and I'll know y'all have training, you are more powerful. So if you're listening to this and you're not on the call with me, because I know all these ladies, you can command energy. It's not rocket science. You're not splitting somebody's brain open and pulling shit out. Like literally, if you understand that we are all energy, everything is energy. And you just say, oh, there's some energy there. Be gone. Like we're going to do a little bit more with that later. But I want you to understand you are more powerful than you know. So if you if you had that as your foundational belief, I'm not a victim. I'm not I'm not just, you know, tolerating all the, whoa, whoa, shit's crazy is going on. You're like, you can be in charge of your energy. What does that change for you? Tell me what that changes. I know when to hear from you. Don't put it in the chat. 
got to talk. What does that change for you? If you knew like, oh, I could handle that. I could do that. Not holding back. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. hot damn. So how much have you been holding back? And what, what else is available for you? Uh, to some extent, for me personally, um, and I think others may relate to it, is um, always navigating the comfort of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were raised a woman <laughs> and we get, we just get that shit at birth, right? Like, it is just like, oh, I don't want to upset. Oh, oh, you're right. Like that. Exactly. And so if you were free of that, my darling Heather, what would be different? A lot. Um, infinite allowance. Um, yeah. Permission doesn't even come into play. And uh, the necessity to fit in some sort of structure is irrelevant. You just show up and do you. Mm -hmm. Who would like to just show up and do you? Just just with all your wonderfulness and all your gifts. Jenny, is that a yes? Is that <laughs> I want to see the hands, babe. Okay. So, so imagine right now how I just said earlier, you can command energy. So right now, this cohort, I just want to see the, the always factoring the comfort of others. Right. So we as women, because most of us are over 40, we as women were trained to do that. We were, you know, you've heard of fight and flight. There's also a, a line in the in the woman's brain that goes tend and befriend, right? We tend to, we take care of, we subordinate our needs, we we have to make sure everyone's okay. And we're okay if everybody's okay. Right. Women are often like, great job. Oh no, 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 it wasn't me. We all did it together. Like we do this shit all the time. And so it's wired in us. So again, like me having had these like weird, wait, how did I know that was a curse? And how do I know how to clear it? What in the fuck is even happening to me in this moment? <laughs> Cause I'm hearing things and I don't know what to do. And this person sitting across from me expected me to do things and I don't know the things, but I did the things. And it's like, what, what? It can feel crazy when you are selling or working in the energy space or working in the quantum or working in the unseen or working in, you know, we're not just selling how to build a website, right? We're, we're moving energy and we're doing healing and all kinds of spiritual stuff. I feel crazy. And many of us have that, well, what are they going to think? It might make them uncomfortable. So this cohort, how much, how much are they afflicted? This cohort? 62%. So so basically there's two thirds blockage to just being fully, fully in your powerful creator self. Do y'all feel that? Is anybody like going, I'm the one bringing it down, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so since I told you that you can command energy, what? I want you to, we're gonna do this and I'll guide a little bit, but I want you to know, oh, I don't have to do that. And you could ask yourself, what number am I? Yes, you can have access to that. Where in my body is it living that, that that energetic thing is stuck? You might feel it. You might sense it. You might just know it. But the question is, who is, is that? Did I carry this in? That's a big one. Yeah, carry it in. Lots of past life stuff here, right? So as I'm asking these questions, are you guys getting like, yep, yep, yep? So the goal is to not, here's what I want to teach you. You don't just go, well, shoot, I guess I'm stuck because, you know, I would, this whole comfort of others thing. The goal is, okay, good data point. Thank you for letting me know that. And now what? I don't want to keep this. This isn't for the highest and best of anybody. So does anybody need to keep it? Or are y'all willing to like transform, transmute? Yeah. Okay. So then the next question is, is it mine? Yes or no? Just ask. Yes or no? It might be yours. Okay, if it's yours, is it this life or a past life? If it's yours, are you carrying it for somebody? If it's yours, did you just take it on being in their proximity or do you have a soul agreement? And you should be getting more clarity. If it's not yours, is it a past life version of you? If that's the case, what needs to happen to release it? See, 
ask like 10 questions there, you should have some sense of, oh, it's that. And then you can just simply ask, what needs to happen now? So sometimes I envision, I just command the energy and I ask, where does it want to go? Does it want to be sent up to the light, given to the divine? Does it want to be returned to the sender? Does it want to be taken down to the earth for mama earth to transmute it? You see, it's all energy and it will give you guidance about where it goes. Do you have any ongoing agreements with people that you're going to perpetuate this? And who would you be if you said no? If you destroyed all those agreements and released any energy for that? And is there any fear in this life? Because sometimes we're in relationships and we're with our partners or our people and we have ways of being. And if suddenly we shift, oh, they might not like me. Or what if it upsets my family? Or what if, what if, what if? So it's the, would it rock the boat such that you have deemed it not safe? So you can just say, I choose to follow what I'm to do, trusting and knowing that everybody has free will and it will be better for everybody actually when I'm in my wholeness. Okay, so normally I do a clearing, but I want to instruct you on how to work with the energy because you can. So taking another moment. Okay, let me just go. Let me just get, okay, so now this cohort, because it was 62%. Let's see how much is still holding on to having to keep other people comfortable. More than 20, more than 10, more than five, completely cleared. Congratulations, women on the call. You did it. So what was that like? Does anybody would just want to say, because some of you do this for a living. This is already this is our, what you do. But what was it like for you? Was, was it easy? Did you, what did you notice? It's the decision and the acceptance of this is going. Boom. <laughs> like, I'm no longer... I'm carrying this boom. <laughs> so good. And see, that's the thing. We're not victims. We're not just like, oh, crap, I'm carrying energy. Well, shoot, I don't know what to do. You have more power than you know. And if you take nothing away from this call, if you knew like, wow, I can play in this energy stuff more than I was aware of, you will have freedom there. Anybody else want to say anything? I can say that allowing myself to shine gives me my power to allow myself to shine and then I can inspire others exactly. to shine So more. good. Congratulations. That's awesome. Perfect. Thank you. But so happy. Okay. So how do you know when you're in the flow? I want you to identify it because here's the thing. We can just get really like, oh, la, 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 la. I got to eat, got to walk the dog. I want you to be like, oh, yikes, I have slipped out of the flow state. Holy shit, what do I do now, right? So again, it's like, you know, nobody looks down and goes, that's so weird, I'm 30 pounds overweight. When did that happen? <laughs> it's, it's, it's been happening. And I want you to be aware because, see, when you have awareness, you have choice. Most of us aren't focusing on our energy. They're not, we just, not you guys, not you women on a call, but very lot of people just like wander through life, la, 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 la. So give me some, what is your experience when you are in the flow state? And if I want to hear the words, because we can go, oh, I'll take that too. Oh, that's right. That's mine too. That's mine. For me, it's joy. When I can be, when I feel joy, when I can like, oh, look, oh, that brings me joy. When I focus on gratitude, when I can find blessings, right? When even I could be standing, like literally today, this is so funny. I'm on the telephone and I got scooped on twice by twice, twice, pigeon, twice, twice. <laughs> That is so funny. And I'm just like, oh, that's cute. How nice. You know, <laughs> like when I can literally be shit on and go, oh, it's good. Thank you for my tree with all the pigeons in it shitting on my head. Right. So, so when I can see the blessings in spite of the poopy stuff, I'm in flow. So I want to hear from you. What 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 are the conditions? Because I want you to go, 
wait, that needs to be my set point. And if that's not my set point, I better do something to get back to that because you not cannot create in a lower state. Well, you can, but you create crappy stuff. So I want you to like, wait, this is a state I got to create in. Okay. I want to hear words, girl. Jenny, let's hear it, baby. Okay. I feel inspired. Inspired. That's my word. Your word. Beautiful. Jenny. Um, peace. Just a, a deep sense of gratitude and peace. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Anybody else? There's a, a wholeness. Wholeness. Nice. And uh, recognizing of um, support and synchronicity. Mm. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Okay. Anybody else? For me, it's love and uh, safety. Nice. And how do you notice safety? What is, what is, how do you connect that? Um, I feel like safety is kind of like the, the frame that kind of like protects my energy so that the, the energy can then like Beautiful. release up and up and shine. Beautiful. So there's safety in your body. Like almost, almost like the divine masculine kind of protective nice. Nice. Kind of framework yeah. around the divine feminine that like then gets to Beautiful. Um, nice. express herself. Perfect. Okay. So that was some on energy and little in alignment. Now we'll talk about emotions. Okay. So you got to have emotional mastery. And um, there's so much to say on this one. When you have, so here's, here's my, here's my, here's, where do I go? Okay. Some of you have heard this teaching. I'll just do it really fast for the people who haven't heard it before. So there's a thing, what I call the expansion zone or the quantum zone, actually it's, it could be even that, right? So I believe our soul calls is called to expand, right? It's because we all think about it. You want to learn more. You want to, you want to shine more brightly. You want to get more clear. You want to help more clients. You want to experience. I want to have, I want to go here. Like that's our natural way of being. Okay. That's our God given. We're one with nature. We're lined to expand. And we do, right? You're looking, wow, I'm not the person I was three years ago. Woo. I, you know, I got new interests. That's it. We are designed to expand. That's our natural state. But our subconscious is like, nope. The subconscious is basically a lot de designed to keep you alive, designed to keep the body alive. Okay. Like all of that stuff that makes you breathe and like, you know, how your lungs and the blood, it's like, it's working to keep the body alive. So therefore crazy little Gabriella gets some idea to do a new program. And the subconscious is like, Oh, Holy shit. Oh no, 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 no. What are people going to think? You're going to fail. And you hear this whole litany of shit designed to keep you safe, small, stuck. Because while well, one part wants you expanding, the other part is like, oh no, contract because you're safer. Like I always say, imagine if you had a child, you used to put them in, we used to put them in play pens, or if you have a dog, you put it in a dog crate so they're not eating the shoes or going out getting harmed, right? So your subconscious has that same aspect of like contraction. So go to do something. Yes, I want this, but then your emotions kick in and all the past failures. Re re get re reignited or all the remembrance of the rejection that ha you had or all the times that, you know, your mother said, God, why do you keep talking? Can't you ever just be quiet for a moment? Who do you think you are? Perhaps all the cultural, you know, some of you are from different cultures in different countries. It's the tall poppy thing. It's the, you know, we don't talk about stuff. Like all that kicks in emotionally. So how do you be with it? So, the goal is to create what's in the subconscious, bring it. Because when I say when you have awareness, you have choice. So it's like, oh gosh, there's that, there's that feeling of fear again. Or oh, there's that voice that's telling me that it's not gonna work, it's never worked. And so what happens is most of us feel those things and we either get pulled down, we collapse in it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't feel, I'm like a big believer, feel all the feelings. You don't spiritually bypass it. You feel all the feelings. Because feelings need to be moved through. It's energy and emotion, right? We got to feel the feelings to be free of them. You don't want to stuff them. But when it's just the mental chatter and the shitty, shitty committee, as they say, da, 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 
And from that, so what happens is your thoughts create your feelings. So you didn't just wake up anxious. Well, it might've been a physiological thing, but let's say you're gonna do something, you're gonna walk into a networking event or you're gonna be on a call. And then all of a sudden you're so anxious and you're scared and you're in doubt. It didn't start with the feelings. It started with what were you telling yourself about the event, right? This is like what they call cognitive therapy. A equals B equals C. So thoughts happen, self-talk happens, feelings happen, and then you're, then you're in this state. So you want to be able to say, okay, oof, there's these emotions. <laughs> oof, I have to have mastery over them because I cannot be pulled down. I might feel them. Now, so here's, here's what I like to do with emotions. Number one, whoa, okay, I'm feeling really, whatever, feeling really triggered here. Okay, ah, so I'm aware of it. I don't wander the streets going, what's wrong with me? <laughs> We've all done that. We've all done that, like where we got like, <laughs> what if we little sisters just wounded and broken going, oh, right? We've done it, I've done it. I think last week I did that. But, um, but we, what we're gonna do is just like, whoa, okay, I'm aware there's a part, I'm feeling this, okay? Number one, identify. Number two, what age is that? Or what does it remind you of? Okay, so whenever you're, so think of how old you are and think of a time you got really emotionally flooded. So if you take that time, like when you're in the flooded part, you could say, how old does this feel? Or what does this remind me of that happened to me before? So whenever you have an overreaction, we say you are regressed, right? So if you're sitting in your 60 year old body and you're like, I'm really pissed because the government did this, okay. But if you're sitting in your 60 year old body going, what if he doesn't ask me out and that? see what I mean? You're like, oh, girl, you have just slid back to you 12. So there's difference between like appropriate feelings, righteous feelings. We should be mad sometimes, we should be happy. We can feel disappointed, but when you are in a feeling that is not your current age or where you just keep cycling in it and you're looping and looping and looping and it's just like, hello, you're not your it's own not self. And we relate to that. Any questions about that? I would just add that for me, it's also the other way around, like not just that my thoughts create the feelings, but sometimes if I have unprocessed feelings that I'm not aware yet then my mind starts to compensate by starting to obsessively think about something, usually oh. something else. So yeah. it's, it's more like a symptom of. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So what I want you to do is don't just like tolerate these emotions that are wandering around, right? So like you, Tina, Tina has a, oh, that's what that means. Go here now, right? So there's a thing called conflicting intentions. And I talked about earlier, so um, I do a lot of work with the parts. So there's a part of me that wants to be really big, really successful, make a bunch of money. But there's another part of me like, I want to work on a lot. Those seem to conflict, right? That's not necessarily true, but that's an example. Or like, I really want to make a lot of money, but gosh, if I do, then my kids are going to, you know, I won't be around for my kids or my husband and, or then I'd be greedy. Like, so there's, there's a conflicting intention. So when you have a lot of emotions, you want to basically go, what part is this? And again, is this somebody else's feeling? Does that make sense? So I want you to be tracking your emotions. So let's, does anybody want to work? Does anybody want to bring something up? I can, I can take it instead of from, from concept to like real world, if you want to share something. Yes. I continue to be told that I should collaborate with someone. Am I in my business? Okay. And my awareness is that uh, as, a, as a young child, uh, actually it starts with my family, being an outlier, not fitting in, recognizing now that I'm the cycle breaker, or as I like to say, the gray sheep, um, that, that fitting in, um, and I did try that 30 years in the financial industry in that <laughs> structure. <laughs> and I was pretty good at the end of pushing back and finding my individuality. Plus I was at a more senior level. So I had some of that, but there definitely was 
push back on that. So, and I have found in the past with networking events, because I'm so energetically in tune and aware, I easily read a room. So I find it very difficult to be at networking events where there isn't that um, empowered sense of self with others and there's falseness and a mass and whatever. And, and uh, so I really s- struggle with that and with collaboration in a business um, I find that those past energies and experiences um, that that comes up. So there's a bigger piece of um, as a multidimensional being fitting into this human reality. Um, And as a young child struggling um, and not accepted um, in my family. So when somebody says to me, oh, I see you collaborating with somebody else. And I'm like, hell no. (laughs) Yes. Okay. There's, there's something there. Okay. Go ahead. Is that a good example? Oh, that's a great example. Okay. 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 It's not even really optimal for you to collaborate. So, but do you know that in your body? You don't need to collaborate. Do you know that in your body? And maybe there's various degrees of collaboration, but but go to your body. Is that really your truth or somebody that sees it for you? It's somebody else who sees it and was intuitively picking up on it. So maybe they are, I mean, spirit works in funny ways. Sometimes the messages are like, ding, little poke, a little jab. So somebody bringing up to collaborate brings forward all those, all those emotions, Right. right? Right. Okay. But it's not, it's not, it's not a yes to collaborate. Um, is it later in the future? No. <laughs> and sometimes collaboration is, Hey, will you share something I'm doing and I'll share something you're doing. It, it isn't, it isn't like, it's not big. We're building together. It's just, we, we, we refer to each other, you know, or we're, we're business buddies. Like there's, there's ways of collaborating that aren't because everything else out there for you is like pushing away. All right. Um, yeah. And-, and that's a great point as far as varying degrees that that can be at, because I'm incredibly giving and supportive and encouraging to others in their business. And uh, there is some of those that are to me, but I think the interpretation of what they were yeah. referring to yeah. and, yeah. you know, being partners and whatever, were just. Hell no. See, know. this is again, again. Just because somebody's like, oh, I've got intuition. Correct. See, you can't let it override. Is what we talked about at the beginning. You have a very visceral knowing that's like, okay. Oh, no. And and is there a space? Yeah, there we go. The the outlier, the one that was never accepted. Um, yeah, this calls for some healing for her. So it was like so that so the invitation to collaborate is really brought this piece to the fore. So you mm-hmm. can. Oh, okay. Do you know what to do? No, you don't. All right. Do I know what to do? Yes. One second. All right. So what age? Because because she's made decisions or there's one particular, yeah, it's really heavy decision she made about herself. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not wanted. Not, I'm just not wanted. Wow. Ooh, sweet Jesus. I can feel that in my skin here. Yeah, I remember being very depressed. I was probably about seven or eight, I think, yeah. maybe older. And I went to my dad. No, he came to me and said, like, what's wrong? You've been off for like weeks. And I'm like, well, you know, you don't love me. And my brother was manipulating all of this, of course. And um, uh yeah, that very much not wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's still 100% carrying that. And so mm-hmm. I would like you, because you have the technology, I, can she do it? Yeah. I want you to isolate that little moment in time. Pull that energy. Ah, there we go. Pull that energy out of her. Give it back. What is you? <laughs> you have the D words. <laughs> Get rid of it. Release whatever you say, get rid of it, let it go. And the filler with the truth of her. 
fill her up with all the love that is there for her today because it's safe today. Hmm. I see a unicorn in a galactic vacuum. <laughs> and actually words are released, rescind. That was the R words, right? I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. I was doing that internally. Beautiful. Is she filled? Yeah. Because any of that, so again, this is how you do it. Everybody can do this. There's a part of me that doesn't feel loved. Okay, wow, that wasn't even, like it's stuck. You're d Decades later, there's still 100% this little girl in Heather that is like, I'm not loved. I'm going to be on the outside, you know? So you can just find that and you can just go, not true. Get that off of you. Literally put her in a shower, pull the mm -hmm. cords, whatever you have to do. And then you repair. And this is where you find the inner child person and you maybe take her to your heart or hold her in your lap and just go, oh, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're so special. And you're going to live here because I'm a really good freaking mama. I know how to love girls mm -hmm. you're with me and you will get loved up. We can all do this. Inner child work is so, so powerful to heal those parts. So let me know how that goes for you, Heather. Yeah, there's, I can feel it cellularly shifting. Oh, beautiful. And it's interesting because, you know, and I have a lot of my clients saying this, like, I've worked on this, I've dealt with this, but because energies are shifting so significantly and so much um, upgrades and um, activations are occurring, those, those deeper pieces that weren't relevant before. Yeah. You can't, you are, can't are yourself, coming up. Right? I really notice that for myself and for clients. Right. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. That was hot. That was really good. I love when like things open up. Okay. So huge flush. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody, well, like, let's do a contribution to Heather. What was that like to watch that process? Cause that was like, she was massively black. So maybe you have the same experience or maybe you can just go good for you. Right. Does anybody say anything to Heather? Cause it's that, that was a gift. I, I thought it was touching. I, I felt like this in my heart too. Like, it, yeah. Also because I can relate. I have had similar experiences, but it was, yeah, I could feel, feel your healing happening. It's, it's Beautiful. Beautiful. Anybody else? Okay. That's how you do it. When there's an emotion, you trace it back. What does this remind me of? Right? and you bring it up and then you do a release process on it. Now there's a thing called a conflicting intention. Has anybody ever said on one hand, I want that, but on the other hand, I want that. Or a part of me wants that, but a part of me wants I really want to be visible, but uh, what if? E -e -e -e. Um, that's called a conflicting intention. So the 95% <clears throat> of our subconscious, everything that runs us in this in the subconscious. So imagine if I had a picture of an iceberg, we have the dog. So imagine it's an iceberg. So this little blip up here in the top is what you consciously know. These are where you set your goals, where you make your decisions. But down here is all this stuff. Perhaps sometimes this is the past life that we don't remember. This is the family, the ancestral stuff. This is the limit. This is like the like that trauma for Heather that was in her subconscious. Like she remembered it, but it, but it it's down here informing. Does that make sense? So you're like. I, I want to network and you get this little like, but you don't fit in. Nobody's going to love you. See what I mean? So what happens is conscious mind goes, I want to do this, but then there's like, oh shit, it's not going to be safe. And, and this isn't consciously happening. You're not going, wait, oh my gosh, there's a part that's telling me I'm not safe. Well, it does for me because I, because I'm aware of it, but all of a sudden we're like, no, nah, I don't want to go to networking. No, that, that'll be stupid. And you talk yourself out of it as, or you're going to make a sale, right? Okay. Or you're going to raise your rates. Good one. I want you to charge X. Okay, I want to charge X. That will work with my revenue. Yes, yes. Who's going to pay for that? Like, really? God, you don't have that much training. Da, 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 da. So there's a part that has deemed that not safe. And maybe it's not safe because you're not supposed to shine so brightly. Maybe it's not safe because you were a bad money manager. Maybe it's not safe because you have a message in here that says, who the hell do you think you are that you could be so successful? We write and it talks us out of it. 
So the way out is show me the part. Show me the part. Remember when you have awareness, you have choice. Bring the subconscious conscious. Oh, okay. There's a part of me that's really spinning around like teen. Oh my God, my head's. You stop the spin and just go, okay, what are you afraid of? What is this? What do you think is going to happen? Literally talk to it like it's another thing. I use parts. I use the hands. You'll hit you're like, all right. Put the part in, put the part of you that wants to like double your rates in your left hand. Okay. And then put the part of you that's like, who the hell? Oh my God, that's going to be disastrous. And then they talk to each other because if you get it out of your head, you have a chance. If you keep it in your head, it's crazy land. <laughs> you have to externalize it. So you externalize it. You literally go, okay, I need, I really want to raise my rates because I would feel more valuable and it would really help me with my income and I would attract higher clients. And then you just let the other one talk. Yeah, but you're not ready for it. What do you think? And, and you let them talk. By doing the talking, you can come to negotiations. And this is the stuff, if you guys are stuck, just get a session with me and we can, we can work through this. Any questions about that? So that's called a conflicting intention. Part of it, and the number one sign of conflicting intentions, you ready? Stop, start, stop, start. I'm gonna do this. Er, now, Jenny, you had legit tech issues. That's not, but sometimes it is. Sometimes our, our subconscious makes powerful things, right? For me, it was always, I'll be, be like in a mastermind or coaching thing. And I'm like, okay, this is my next year. Okay, cool. And then boom, I sprain my ankle or boom, I break my wrist. It's like, damn it. <laughs> so it's not, it's not even my mind, my, literally my body's being thrown on the ground. So therefore I'm like, oh, I can't do that thing now because I have this thing. And I know that my subconscious and my past lives orchestrated that. So I wasn't out shining. I had to do a lot of work with my favorite healer to get that done, right? Because that was that for me, that's how mine always showed up, illness or injury. Sometimes people are like, I've lost the money or I had a breakdown, my car broke down or my kid got sick or I'm just, or sometimes we just go to paralysis, right? Like there's a fight flight and there's also a freeze. We'll just be like, whoa, I'm really numb. I don't understand what's happening, but I'm just numbing out. So Where does procrastination fit in that? It feels like it goes in there somewhere. Yes. So sometimes here's my take on procrastination. Sometimes procrastination is purposeful because it might not be aligned yet. So you're like, I really want to do this, but it's like, uh, I can't say yes to it because it's not quite right. Or um, you don't yet have all the clarity. It's like being seven months pregnant, right? You got to wait till it cooks a little bit more till you get more clear clarity or more em embodiment. Or it's not the right thing. It's just not the right thing. And so there's a knowing like you, like if somebody's like, come on, let's collaborate. You might be like, yeah, I'll call her later. I'll call her later. And you could judge it like, oh, what a loser I am. Cause I'm not, I'm progressing. Or you could go, wow, there's wisdom there. There's a wisdom that's pulling me away. But sometimes it's a sabotage. Sometimes it's like, so you just ask, okay, what's going on? Not aligned, not embodied, not the right time, not the right person. Or hark, there's a part of me that's afraid of this and I'm sabotaging here to see. So it's not just one thing, Heather, it's multiples of things. Wow, I'm just, <laughs> I would love a question. I feel like I'm just talking at you really fast, but I hope this is good. I'm giving some good tools, I'm hoping. So any other, any other questions, comments? What are you getting here? Have we got questions? Well, I'll keep going um, then. Feel free not to a break. question, just yeah. a comment. Okay, go. I'm loving this. It's me. It's landing and it's making so much sense. And I love what you just said about procrastination. That that makes so much sense to me. That it's got a positive and negative. Yeah. Yeah. Element. And yeah, I'm very much. Um, I want to use the word guilty and not use the word guilty because that sounds like a horrible word of the freeze sometimes yeah. of I'm doing it and I'm so motivated and I'm so there. And then it's like, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. And I, I also kind of want to have the giggles about the two hands because you said 
that's less crazy. I think if my kids walked in and my two hands were speaking to each other, they would yeah, think I'm I more crazy. Yeah, welcome to my weird world. Yeah. But I do love it. So yeah. thank you and thanks oh, for the the okay. humor because I suddenly had yeah. this mental image of them going, what the hell, mom? <laughs> in the olden days, because because now I use a pendulum, but in the olden days, I would do muscle testing and I would have to stand up face north and just like move my body and my kids I made a call and all of a sudden and they were like what are you doing <laughs> or I'd be in the grocery store they're like mom you're doing the thing again because <laughs> you know how children think we're goofy anyway so here's one thing I want to talk about that's so important nervous system safety if you have a nervous system that is jacked up um, your number one, number one most important thing is to factor in your nervous system because you could have the greatest opportunity, but if you've been a little, yeah, right? Like I have a client who was going through divorce and she's a goat. I mean, this chick, she gets, oh my gosh, she, she gets stuff done and she kept beating herself up. Like, well, I have this plan. I'm supposed to do all this for the lawyer and the architects and the house and da, 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 da. And I was just like, okay. I know it seems like you're messing up here. I, I know it seems like what is wrong with you, but check in with your body. Seriously, you're going through a divorce. You have little kids. You're going to be preparing for mediation. This is shitty. How much availability do you really have in your body to do all this other stuff? And she's like, oh, you're right. I don't. So instead of doing this big project, Will your nervous system, will your body allow this project, this a small scope? And it was like, oh, and before I knew about nervous system regulation, we would just go, come on, like, you're so bright. What's wrong with you? Huh? You could just do all that. But if your body's like, I can't fucking do it. Like I went through this with my son being, you know, really ill with drugs and mental illness. And I'm like, what's wrong? He's been sober a while. Like, what's wrong with me? Like he's sober, but my body, my nervous system is like, but it feels like it, like the other shoe's gonna fall any second. So you're still on like hyper alert PTSD. So you think he's, yeah, he's been sober six months, but your body's just remembering all that stuff. So you don't have availability. And it was so challenging. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with me? Why am I not open for business? Why am I not creating? I, I wanna create. My nervous system is like, go sit down and watch Ted Lasso <laughs> and get some gluten-free cookies and just calm the fuck down. And, and I used to fight it for a really long time because I'm like, oh, I'm tired of waiting. But uh, but the nervous system is, uh, like you can't outrun a nervous system. You can't just go, just give me two weeks and I'll sprint really fast and come back. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, no. So that's another thing is just to factor that in. Like you can't overrun that. Does anybody, I hope that's really, I want that to be compassion for you, like self-compassion, like, wow, look what I've gone through. Maybe, dot, so the hands, you'd be like, you know what? Yeah, you've been, gone. it's okay, right? Like I, my number one way to approach myself is with, is with gentleness and grace and compassion and mercy. And so if you're being anything less, just literally ask yourself, uh, what would Trees say right here? What would Trees tell me right now? Because it doesn't help when we're, persecuting ourselves when we're putting ourselves back in the trauma state by being mean to ourselves or going oh my god you're so lazy what the hell's wrong with you what and then the comparison well look they did they're doing it why that's just that's just victimization so this is again mastering your emotions and sometimes the emotions are tuning into the body and just going oh that's all you can do you're all good love you up you get, you get through it faster that way. Okay, so emotions related to sales and marketing. Annabert, you want to say something? Hun? Yeah, I'm I'm going through similar things like you just mentioned about your son. Mm -hmm. Um. So what did you really do? Uh, what advice would you give on that? My Because I'm worried that my son is moving back, you know. But I don't, and my intuition is telling me that it will be okay. But um, my fear, yeah. Yeah. the remembrance, yeah. like you just shared, that's very hard. So it's it's not a one time, it's not a one moment thing. No. You know, so 
um, sometimes like literally giving him to God or, or giving him like plugging his soul into whatever that is that helped sometimes, you know, when I was at the very worst, when I, I thought I, I didn't think I could keep going, uh, one of my life coaches said to me, the God in you is bigger than the stuff in your life. And it helped me kind of like, okay, this is just shit. I can't, I don't think I can physically do this emotionally, but it kind of like for one moment gave me a little breath, right? And I, I kind of had the sense that I would be okay. That was when he was the most critical, right? Then afterwards, um, I became merciless about finding joy, taking care of me. I became number one. I became like, I... I have to take the baths. I have to eat the good food. I have to play with my boyfriend on the weekend. Like whatever it was, I had to go. I choose me first. I have to fill me up first because I was aware how depleted I was. But then six months go by and I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? I should be farther. And then I had to tune into my nervous system and just ask. And it was like, um, no, you're not ready yet. It's still, you're still in a PTSD state. And it just give it time. So then I had to have gentleness and compassion for myself and go, oh, okay, I guess, I guess I'm not ready. I guess frustrated because I want to be farther, but I can't outrun this. I can't override this. This, this poor body's been through so much. So, so it's just gentleness and acceptance, mm -hmm. you know, okay. it's hard and bless you. Like I said, love. Thank you. Tough place. Too. <laughs> okay. So sales and marketing. Your emotions are ooh, ooh, gonna make or break it. So tell me how much you love selling. How many, how many of you love getting on the phone, enrolling a client? Some of you love it, some of you look, and this is the emotions are gonna make or break it. And I and I talk a lot about selling, but if you but I want you to understand that your emotions and your energy alignment impact not only your life, but every business outcome. Right. So if you have visibility issues, if you don't want to be seen, if you if the emotions or the energetics around that, it's going to slow down your visibility. If you have worth and deservability issues, you will make us less money. So it plays out in every single aspect of your business. So this isn't just grab the latest, greatest tools, right? It's just like, okay, oh my gosh. So I have so I still have so much to do. Oh, you're like, okay, let's see. Um, learn to stop collapsing. So when you find yourself in it, it's just like, okay, you got to watch it. You don't want to just stay in that state. The goal is, okay, what's going on? Walk the emotions back, find the part. Um, another one is check for others' energy. Check for others' energy. This is a big one. Have you ever been with somebody and been like, God, I just feel so off today. Like, I don't know what's wrong. I just... Uh, or you just woke up in the morning and suddenly you were insecure or you woke in the morning and suddenly you're like, God, I'm not even feeling myself. I just feel really anxious or I don't have confidence. Have you ever do, do that? Maybe you ate too much sugar and drank too much the night before, <laughs> but if that wasn't the case, you literally ask your body truth. Is this mine or somebody else's? You know, Heather talked about you go into a networking group and then all of a sudden you're like in this weird, like, Ugh. Okay, is that me or somebody else? So I want you to start differentiating and being rem in remembrance to be in relationship with your energy, with your body. Make sense? I'm trying to find, get all the points in here. Um, and then I want you to decide what you're going to have and you act as that. Okay, and there's way more. There's so many, there's so many. This is where you you can just book a call with me and we can figure out how I could support you moving forward because I have so much more. This could be a three day event. But what if you said this is what this is my goal? I will be having that. So number one, does anybody have a goal that you can just say I'll be yes? This is what I'll be having. This is this is what I'm going to be having. This is I'm deciding on this now. And you don't have to tell us the goal. I just want to like, yeah, I, this is my, I am deciding because the decision, nothing happens until you decide. It's the number one thing. You move everything. The movement starts when you're, the universe is like, oh shit. She's okay. Okay. Let's get, go, 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 go. Right. It, it, it would be like, yeah, that would be nice. 
or yeah, I would love it, or I hope so. That's not a decision. A decision is, I'm a yes to that. And the next question is, who do I have to be? Because this is also an identity piece, right? So maybe, Heather, you need to be the person that loves the fuck out of yourself. And you don't need to collaborate. You might collaborate. And you can play with other people or not play with other people. There is no charge anymore because you are a being of light and love and you already know that. And you don't need to be in any relationship with the past because here's the thing, 180 degrees from sick is still sick. What? So either I'm here and I'm a lovable or I can't play with anybody because I don't, <laughs> whenever we're this way, we're still in a relationship to it. The other pole is I show up and be me. I'm perfect, whole and complete. I filled myself with love. doesn't matter what my family did. I chose them anyway. <laughs> Sometimes don't you go, good hell, that was an interesting choice I made. <laughs> what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Ooh. Anyway, so get your goal. Give me a couple words like identity. What what identity? And it's and it's not like, oh, I have to be a Republican or I have to be, I have to be a, a published author. It's generally the qualities that are already in you that you kind of go, wait, I just have to be more of that. So does anybody have any like, yep, for me to have this goal, the identity that I need to step into is what, give me a couple words about what that would be. Cause you, cause you have the goal on the outside and then the identity is on the inside. This is the person that has the goal that does the goal. Jenny, go. Um supreme confidence and just knowing boom okay so what you do now watch and here's here's a really cool exercise so the 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 you that is not supremely confident and doesn't have the knowing i want you put put your body in that state so shift your state into an insecure inadequate scared anxious who the hell do you think you are state so put your body there and and just like, I'm the part of Jenny that doesn't believe in myself. And just say it, just like the, the old state. Say it. You're supposed to say it out loud. Oh, oh. I'm the part of Jenny that doesn't believe I can do it. Okay. On the count of three, you're going to like pop out into the new state. One, two, three, go. I'm Jenny and I can totally do it. But what do you notice differently? Yes, yes. Okay, this is this confidence, energy yeah. alignment. Yes, this is a Tony Robbins tool. I'm just, I've used it for years as well. He says, you don't have anxiety, you do anxiety, that your feelings are actually states. And so you could be in the state and usually there's a contraction or constriction, you're smaller, you'll be like, oh, really hope I can sell some stuff. Okay, boom, flip into the, and you can practice, like I want you to practice with your body to so you get the goal, create the identity, move it into your body and be the state of that. Like literally like you're in the mirror going, cool, let's sign that contract. Yes, I'm happy to do that for you. Yes, like you literally rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Because in a second, if you wake up and you're having a bad day, you can always, pop the state. If you rehearse the state enough, it becomes automatic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. There's so much Mark can talk about. So I really will invite you if you are interested, let's have a call. I would love to work with you more. Um, I want to hear takeaways. And I know we just, we, there's, there's, I have too much material for 90 minutes and you guys have been a great audience. I really appreciate the participation. Um, but I want to, we got to get off and I want to hear your takeaways. What's different? What are you walking away with? What do you feel more empowered to do? What's possible now? I just shared, but should I do my takeaway quickly? Yes. Yes. Go. Um, a whole lot of things. I took a lot of notes and a whole lot of things, but what's really hitting me now is giving myself grace mm -hmm. to do with the nervous system regulation because I was doing a lot of stuff before 
the last two years and I was exhausted actually and a whole lot of other stuff that happened and I keep thinking I should be doing more I should be further ahead I should be... and I just felt like oh you know and then I literally have I spent a lot of the last two days just reading a book for the first time in ages and I was feeling like guilty and I was doing a little bit of stuff in between but I was like no I'm giving this to myself beautiful and I feel so much better and I it's that it's that giving yourself grace to be when you need to be and here's what here's you know the identity like the beliefs that you develop one of my beliefs Jenny that has also on a very this has saved me is if I honor my health my energy my body God takes care of my business and the finances so if you come from scarcity and lack and fear you can't just read a book for two days but if you trust and know, okay, if I get the guidance, I'm supposed to back off and just nourish me. I got to trust and know that monies will be there, right? So if you don't have that, it's harder just to listen to yourself. That's really great. I love that. That made me happy to hear. Other takeaways. I recognize through all of the things that you shared and um, I'm fine tuning those last breadcrumbs, addressing them. And it's time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Made my day, Heather. Made my day to hear that. All right, Tina, Anna Barrett, Gabriella, takeaways. Uh, I've kind of decided uh, to do workshop in later after the summer, mm -hmm. and it's almost like my the the vibrations in my hair body. I mean throat and here mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is becoming worse and worse and worse. So it's hard to deal with, but I'm thinking that, and actually you, the session we had uh, some time, uh, you said to me that I have taken on um, the collective mm -hmm. task to help people shine. And that was a big task we were agreed on. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking, and you talked about my throat chakra and all that you have talked about today uh, reminded me of that and the importance of releasing that energy, although I don't know how to do it, but I will try. You will. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad you're with us. Thank you for sharing. Tina and then Gabriella, if you're on the call still. What's your takeaway, honey? Yeah, for me, the um, embodied part was very helpful. And like, also I had this realization during the call that, you know, even though I've been aware of like the negative parts, the ones that want to keep me small and keep me back, that they're not, you know, how they're doing their thing. But I also wasn't quite so aware how I also have this other part of me that's like overly confident that's like jumps onto things without thinking and yeah let's do this and how like that's actually not helpful because then that's just kind of makes the other the negative parts just gonna be like you know and so like I realized like if you're embodied then you're not doing either one right. of those three right. right so yeah that was really helpful good and you can use the parts and you can just say to the negative part like what would you need to do to what would I need to do crazy crazy common one what would it take for you to trust me? Right. Mm -hmm. so you got the, what happens is you get the gas, like, I'm gonna do it. And then this one break. Nope, nope, nope. And so you got to just navigate that and go, okay, imagine we have an experiment. And for three weeks, you need to see certain things. So you trust me. So you don't keep stopping me. And this part might say, well, good Lord, you got to slow it down or whatever it is. Right. And so, so that's the negotiation. All mm -hmm. right, Gabriella. And do you have anything you can share with us? Takeaways. And if not, that's okay too. I don't know if you're, here. Um, this yeah, I'm here. I'm been in and out. It's been um 
it's been good being in this energy today. So thanks for letting me listen in. Oops, got great energy on this call. All right, loves, thank you so much for showing up. I, I just feel so honored that I get to be in your presence and get to share what I know. Reach out if you could like, if you would like some support, I could support you working together. I've got from like $97 a month engagements to $2,000 a month, anywhere in between. We can work something out. Um, anyway, much love. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.